This is five on your side at four, focused on you. Right now at four, protesting marijuana dispensaries. Students in South St. Louis send a message to two businesses trying to move in near their school. Thanks for being here. I'm Kay Quinn. And I'm Brent Solomon. The dispensaries would be built near Lift for Life Academy. That's in Soulard. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki is live outside of the school for us. Holden, what are those students telling you? Well, Brent, Kay, when I spoke with school leaders at Lift for Life Academy in the past, they told me they would be okay with a dispensary in the neighborhood if it wasn't directly across the street from the school. But when I spoke with students today, they told me they want both proposed dispensary locations out of their community. Now, under Missouri state law, dispensaries aren't allowed within a thousand feet of schools, churches, and daycares. But the city of St. Louis opted out of that law in 2020. As students take to the streets asking city leaders to revisit that decision, 8th Ward Alderwoman Kara Spencer has vowed to look into how other Missouri cities have handled distance requirements for dispensaries and liquor stores near schools like Globe Drugs, which is owned by a relative of Lift for Life Academy's executive director. When I go, when I go off campus or when I go to one of the local restaurants, I'm not visibly seeing, oh, there's a liquor store right there. But when I go off campus, I will physically see this weed dispensary. In response to those concerns, city leaders have actually allocated $1 million in American Rescue Plan funds into studying code issues across the city. I'll have more on this ongoing situation coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. All right, Holden Kerwicki reporting for us. New developments and an attempted carjacking in Ladue. Right now, two juveniles are in custody. Police say a group wearing ski masks fired a shot into a man's car while trying to steal the car. This was on Ludu Ridge. The suspects got away in a minivan. Well, overnight, police spotted the van and arrested the two minors. They also recovered two guns. No word if any more suspects are on the run. Right now, a man is recovering after he was stabbed in downtown St. Louis. Around 645 this morning, police responded to the Central West End Metrolink station for a report of a shooting. They found the victim had actually been stabbed. Metro tells Five on Your Side the incident didn't happen on their property. They say the victim boarded a train at the Civic Center station downtown, then got off at the Central West End station to get medical attention. A St. Louis firefighter is okay now after getting hurt battling a fire this morning in North St. Louis. Just before 7 this morning, crews responded to a building fire on Palm Street near Geraldine Avenue. They found heavy fire on the second floor there. As crews worked to put out the fire, one firefighter fell through the landing. He was safely removed and crews evacuated the building. While the fire remains under investigation, firefighters are saying this. We're going into this time of year, right, uh, that we start to see the uptick, uptick in our vacant building fires. Folks trying to stay warm and that's what we, we see a lot of this time of year. Not saying that's what happened here, but that could have been a contributing factor. No one was found inside the building. The injured firefighter was treated on scene. Well, our little flirt with winter-like weather appears to be over. <laughs> Sunny and much warmer today. And if you like that trend, Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell says you're going to love the next few days. Scott? At least temperature-wise, you're going to really like this weekend if you're into warmer weather and being outside. You know, this morning it wasn't as cold for most of us as what we've seen the last couple of mornings. The sun rising over St. Louis with temperatures dropping for most of us back into the upper 20s to lower 30s. But a gorgeous sunrise around the metro area early this morning, and that has transitioned into a quite mild, beautiful afternoon. The average high this time of year is in the lower 60s, and that's where most of us are. 65, one of the warmer spots at Creve Coeur, Alton 61, Washington, Missouri is 66 degrees. As you look across the region, we're 63 officially in St. Louis. The cooler air shoved off to our south and to our east. You can really tell those winds out of the south bringing in the nicer temperatures and the blue skies too. That's the difference that we'll have going into the weekend. Yes, the warming trend is continuing into this weekend, but with that warmer weather, clouds return, especially as we head through the day on Saturday into Saturday evening. Maybe a sprinkle or a spritz, but really limited rain chances into early next week. We'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes, Kay. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Scott. Right now, the Secretary of State is preparing for his third visit this month to the Middle East with the urgent need to protect civilians in Gaza. That's right. While on Capitol Hill, House Republicans are taking up a bill to fund Israel. 
Well, Democrats say it will never pass in the Senate. NBC's Alice Barr reports from Washington. As the Israeli military keeps hammering Gaza from the air, outrage is growing about the death and destruction on the ground. Mr. President. In response to a protester's demands for a ceasefire, President Biden saying he believes there should be a pause to get hostages out of Gaza. The White House clarifying that does not mean a full ceasefire, which Israel says would only benefit Hamas. Secretary of State Antony Blinken returning to Israel, promising to press for concrete steps to protect civilians. When I see a Palestinian child, a boy, a girl, pulled from the rubble of a collapsed building, that hits me in the gut as much as seeing a child in Israel or anywhere else. After deadly strikes on two refugee camps in Gaza, there are mounting questions over whether Israel's tactics are worth the price. Israel citing a senior Hamas official's threat to repeat the October 7th terror attack insists it must press on. Hamas is doing its best to maximize Gazan civilian losses. They've, they've deliberately put their military machine in civilian neighborhoods, under hospitals. On Capitol Hill, Speaker Mike Johnson in his first press conference underscoring House Republicans' commitment to passing standalone aid for Israel while insisting it must be paid for. He's proposing cuts to the IRS. We have obligations and we have commitments and we want to protect our, our, and help and assist our friend uh, Israel, but we have to keep our own house in order as well. Though the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says the Speaker's plan would actually add to the deficit. The White House and Senate Democrats have pushed back hard against separating aid to Israel from support for Ukraine. Speaker Johnson today promised a vote on Ukraine aid would come next, paired with more funding for the U.S. southern border. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. And you can get updates on the war by texting the word Israel to 314-425-5355. Big changes at the headquarters of St. Louis Bread Company, why Panera is announcing corporate layoffs. And a new era for the company that runs Six Flags, the merger that has it joining forces with a competitor. As the Texas Rangers celebrate their World Series victory, we take a look back at one of our own. The year we won with Pujols, Wainwright, and Roland on the field. And Project 5 and Behavioral Health Response are teaming up to provide mental health counseling. If you or anyone you know needs mental health support, it is available right now. Call 988 to speak to a trained counselor. Teens can text BEHEARD to 31658.